Hey everyone, so the next thing we wanna talk about here is fixed assets. So when it comes to fixed assets, there's quite a few steps involved. That's why I have a separate video on fixed assets altogether. But I'm just here in my chart of accounts under accounting and then and then chart of accounts. And I'm just taking a look at some of my fixed assets that are available to me out of the box in zero. And first of all, what are fixed assets? So fixed assets are really longer term assets that are gonna be generating you revenue over the coming years but ones that have a depreciation factor associated to it. So for example, if you purchase a company vehicle or any vehicle for that matter, in a few months, it, you know, it depreciates in six months, it depreciates definitely in a year it depreciates. So for accounting purposes, you need to factor in that depreciation expense into the, you know, residual value of that specific asset. So that's why when it comes to fixed assets, you got the actual asset itself, which is the, you know, in this case, let's just say the vehicle. And then you've got what we can see here as an accumulated depreciation account or accumulated depreciation expense account, which tracks that depreciation over time. And there's a few different methods for depreciation. We're not gonna get into the details of that. I'm gonna have, definitely show you how to walk. I'm gonna definitely walk you through how to set everything up, but there's different methods and, and ways of actually depreciation, depreciating assets based on the type of asset it is. But of course, if your business is this complex, I do recommend getting an accountant to help you determine what the, the value of these assets are and the, the right method to use. But either way, let's actually walk through how to set up fixed assets in zero. As I mentioned, there's a few steps here. So first things first, if we take a look at the fixed assets available to us in zero, you can see that I've got computer and office equipment and I've got vehicles and then obviously the corresponding depreciation accounts. We're going to be walking through in the second half of the video how to set up your own fixed asset accounts in the second half of this video. The first half of the video is going to focus on the examples that are, are provided to us here. So Let's take computer and office equipment, for example. So I've got the corresponding chart of accounts set up. The next thing we wanna do here is just head over to accounting and then fixed assets, or you can just head over to, actually you can go to accounting advanced and then go to fixed asset settings. And so now that we have the chart of account set up, what we need to do next is create the asset type. So the chart of account on its own does nothing. It's just setting up the account for the transactions to flow through. But now we have to actually set up that fixed asset type. You can see here previously, I created a vehicles asset type. I'm gonna be looking through the example of, there's an office equipment, so I'm gonna set up a computer's asset type here. So let's go ahead and click on plus asset type. And then let's just call it, computer, let's just say, and then asset account in this case is going to go to the computer and office equipment account. Accumulated depreciation account is going to go to the accumulated depreciation account, as we can see here, as, as was already set up in zero. And then the depreciation expense account. So every month, let's just say the asset depreciation depreciates and we need to account for it. Which expense account do we want to track it to? So I believe there's a general depreciation account. Yeah, so we can just put it towards that. Obviously, you can create your own separate, let's say computer and office equipment depreciation account if you'd like to track it that way. But for, for simplicity, I'm just going to track it to the general depreciation account. And then down at the bottom here is book depreciation default. So for this particular asset type, so no matter how many computers I purchase, what's a depreciation method that makes sense for this asset type or this class of assets? Again, this is where we get into a little bit more detail on the accounting side of things. So if you're not too sure, this is where I would look towards. An but for simplicity purposes, I'm going to go with the declining balance method for, for these computers. And the averaging method for depreciation, it's asking you, do you want to just you know, do it over a full month or specific days. I'm going to go ahead and select full month again for simplicity. And I'm going to say this has a depreciation rate of let's say 20% per year, but you could also use, um, you could also enter the effective light life instead and just, it'll depreciate, depreciate over that time period. But for, for, for the time period, I'm just going to go ahead and put in 20% as the depreciation rate. So once we're done there, go ahead and click save. And once you've done that, now you can see that the computer asset type is set up. So that would be step number two. 
Another thing I'll just draw to your attention here in the fixed asset asset settings is under accounts, whenever you dispose of one of these assets, you can also specify what account that goes to, the gain on that, on that disposal, and then also the loss as well. We're not going to worry about that for the time being, but you could modify these settings here under fixed asset settings. Okay, so now we have the asset type. Let's head over to accounting and then click on fixed assets. So you can either do that here or you can click on accounting and advanced and then click on fixed assets. So we've got the asset type. Now we have to actually set up the assets. We actually have to create that you know computer that we're registering in, in the business. So in order to do that, just go ahead and click on new asset. And then go ahead and give this asset a name. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna type in my MacBook. And then it's gonna assign it an asset number. And again, you can change this, but I would just leave the sequencing sequencing as is. And then first thing it's gonna ask for here is the purchase date. So I'm gonna say I purchased this on January 1st and for a purchase price of, I don't know, $5,000. You can put it on other information as well, like the warranty expiry and serial number. I'm going to leave that blank. And then this is the important part. You have to, you have to associate it with an asset type. So we just set up the computer asset. So I'm going to go ahead and select the computer asset here. And now you can see all of my fields or corresponding chart of accounts populate accordingly. You can add a description here if you'd like. I'm going to leave that blank. And then the book value. So now we get into the accounting side of things of, you know, what's the book value of this item? How much is it depreciating by? And when does depreciation start? So I'm going to say the depreciation starts on January 1st, pretty much as soon as I bought it. You can see the default values populate over from that asset type. But this is where I have an opportunity to make a change specific to this asset that I'm registering. But I'm going to leave this all the same. I'm going to go ahead and click on register. And now the asset has been entered. Right away, if you notice this, you'll see that the purchase price is $5,000 as we entered, but the book value is $4,833. And that's because I specified that the depreciation begins at the beginning of January, which means you know we're mid-February right now. So you've already seen sort of a month and a half of depreciation, definitely a month taken into account, but uh, you can see that the depreciation has already kicked in for this particular asset. So let's head back over into accounting and then chart of accounts and take a look at what we have there. So I'm going to go to my assets category and scroll down. So you can see here that computer and office equipment, the value of that account is still zero. And I'm going to explain why that's the case. But you can see that the depreciation has actually started kicking into this account because it's taken in what I believe is, well, actually both months, January and February depreciation into account. So it's going to do that automatically. If we go back, the reason that, you know, the computer and office equipment is zero, you're probably wondering why we entered the asset in. That's because we haven't actually set up a transaction to flow through this account. And what I mean by that is there's no record trail that we've actually purchased this computer. We've entered the details of the asset, the book value, depreciation method, but we haven't actually created a transaction or in this case, a bill to purchase the, the, the computer. So that's what we have to do that in order for it to hit the chart of account. So if we scroll to the top and click on this plus sign, and then click on bill. This is where we're gonna enter the details of that bill. So under from, I'm just gonna type in, you can create a new contact here if you'd like, just for simplicity, I'm just gonna select example supplier. And then the date of that bill, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and do January 1st. I'll say that you know due date was January 31st. And then I'll go in and add the actual item that I'm gonna go ahead and purchase. So let's go ahead and type in computer and give it a price, $5,000 was the amount. And then under the purchases account, so you can go ahead and select the corresponding account that it relates to. So in this case, Let's see if we have a uh, computer and office equipment. Perfect. I'll leave the tax exempt for simplicity and click save. Oh, and looks like you do need an item code for this. So I'm just going to type in a random code, click save. 
Okay, so now I've got my computer purchased and set up. So from here, I can go ahead and click approve. Okay, so that has now been created. And obviously, if I've already paid for it, which I probably would have, I can go ahead and put in my payment details. But let's head back over into accounting and then chart of accounts and then take a look at assets. And then here under computer and office equipment, you can see that $5,000 computer is now reflected here as an asset because I, I created a transaction for it. So as you can see, there's quite a few steps involved with setting up fixed assets. And, and that's why I've created a separate video for this. The next thing we'll do is actually set up our own fixed asset accounts and run through the exact same scenario, just so you're very, very clear on how this process works. Okay, so the first step here is to add an account. So let's click on add account. And because I'm in the business of coffee, I'm going to, you know, create an, a fixed asset account for, let's just say an expensive coffee machine or an espresso machine. So here under account type, let's go ahead and select fixed asset. Let's give it a code. So if I just follow the naming convention down at the bottom, I'm going to go with 1540 as my account code. And then I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just go with coffee machine and I'll probably have a few of these machines in my store. So I'll go ahead and put in coffee machine. I can give it a description if I'd like, and then I'll just leave everything else kind of as is as a default. So I'll go ahead and click save. So now you can see the coffee machine fixed asset account has been added. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create this appreciation account. So if you want to just follow the same naming convention, just go ahead and click into this account and actually just copy the name here. This is probably just a lot easier and then click cancel and then click add account. And then under account type, we're going to select fixed asset. Again, we're creating the depreciation account for the coffee machines in this scenario. So I'm going to go 1541 as my account code. And then here under name, I'll just copy paste here and then I'll change from vehicles to coffee machine. Okay, so let's go ahead and click save. And now you can see the depreciation account has now been set up. So now let's just follow the same steps that we did before. So the first step here is scroll up to the top, click accounting, and then click into advanced. And then go ahead and click into fixed asset settings. And then let's set up the asset type. So asset type in this case would be coffee, machine and then asset account that it's attributed to would be the coffee machine account accumulated depreciation in this in this scenario would be the coffee machine depreciation account and then depreciation expense we'll just go to the general depreciation expense account i'll use the same depreciation method so declining method declining balance full month and i'll just do 20 percent again let's go ahead and click save Okay, so now we've set up the asset type. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head over here to fixed assets and then actually create the asset in the system. So let's go ahead and click on new asset and then the asset name. So I don't know, I'm just gonna call it new espresso machine that I purchased, let's just say on, yeah, let's just do January 1st again. Purchase price was $20,000 and then asset type here would be a coffee machine. You can put in a description if you'd like can change the depreciation method down below, but I'm gonna leave the default settings there and click register. So now the espresso machine has been registered. If we head over into, well, even if before we do that, you can see the book value is already being reflected based on the purchase date and the depreciation method. But if we head over here into chart of accounts, Again, you'll notice a $0 on that coffee machine because we have not actually made a purchase for it yet. So let's just go ahead and do that. So new bill, and then let's just go in, type in our supplier. And you could obviously set up a new contact for who you're uh, purchasing from, but I'm just gonna do new supplier for simplicity. Date, Jan 1st, go due date, end of Feb, or sorry, end of Jan. And then let's add the item. So. In this case, espresso machine, or actually let's give it a code, and then espresso machine. And I think we said it was $20,000. And let's see if we have um, 
a well we got that purchases account but I'd rather put this towards okay yeah no let's just let's just put it towards this coffee machine account that's fine and then perfect let's go ahead and click save and then go ahead and click approve Okay, perfect. And of course you can add your payment details down below, but I'm gonna leave that blank. So if we head back to accounting and then chart of accounts. Sorry for that. So if we head over here to accounting and then chart of accounts, and then you can see here now the coffee machine has a value associated with it for $20,000. Perfect. So the last thing I want to actually show you is how to manually run depreciation. You shouldn't have to do this, especially if you set everything up the way that I just walked through, the depreciation will kick in automatically. But if we head over here into accounting, I just want to kind of make you aware of this. If you go to fixed assets, there's an area called run depreciation. So if you click into run depreciation, you can see here that I've already, you know, the January and February depreciation has already kicked in, but you can see that the next one, the next time the depreciation is gonna run is from March, March 1st to March 31st. You can actually run this immediately. But again, I wouldn't recommend doing that because it's gonna kick in automatically and it'll throw off the accounting side of things. But this is an option here, especially if you set something up in error or you're trying to roll forward or roll back depreciation, you can come in here and make those manual adjustments. Okay, so I know that was a super long video, but fixed assets are a big topic. As you can see, there's multiple steps involved in setting up those fixed assets. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.